I'm not really, I'm not really sure why I'm here. I, uh, I got a phone call and they were trying to explain to me what a TED is and what a TEDx is and what TED Talks are and that I would be a great person to do a talk and I didn't really understand. Um, and then I found out that the topic was journeys. I'm like, okay, okay, I've kind of been on some journeys in my life. And then I thought, you know what? What I could probably do is address a bunch of people my age and tell them about how, you know, when you get so far in life, you get to a point where you feel like you're in a rut and it's time to do something new. And then I learned this show sold out to students. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay, that's a little bit different. Well, what I want to talk about is that um, in this community, I've lived here for 20 years, and it's for the first 15 years of that, I was very, very happy without being involved. I was very, very happy being a person that, you know, I went to work, I did my job, I came home, and I didn't really get too involved in the community. I went to Michigan Tech, I graduated from Michigan Tech, I have a degree in electrical engineering, I can do computer science. For fun, I sit home and I do three-dimensional modeling on my computer with simulated physics. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. We don't gotta talk about that. And then I got married, and then I was gonna have a child. And I realized that, you know what, if you're gonna live in a community, maybe you wanna to contribute to that community. Maybe you wanna have a voice in that community. Maybe you want to do more than just be a person that sits in your house, and you wanna do something about it. And so I decided to get involved in a couple of things. And over the past five years, I have learned a lot about myself. I've learned a lot about other people. I've made some people very happy and enriched their lives, and I've made some people really miserable um, by some of my expectations and the things that I kind of expect as I've kind of gone on my journey. Um, where I have gained most of my experience is in two different programs that I've been involved with. The first is called the Copper Doug 150. It is a, of all things for a 3D physics guy, a dog sled race. I don't know anything about dog sleds. I don't know anything about mushing. I don't know anything about the sport. But what I do know when I heard about this thing, and I got to go out and do a video shoot and make a promotional video, that it was something that was gonna be really great for the community. It was gonna be something that was gonna be a community changer that a lot of people could get involved in and a lot of energy could put in, and it would really, really actually do some good. Why do I want it to do some good? Because I'm raising a daughter in this community, because other people are raising children in this community, because we are in a place that is isolated and small, and we do not have access, our kids do not have access always to great, the greatest things. And so I thought, why not get involved with something that could have an impact? The second program was PJ Olson's Rock Camp. I'm a musician, I own a PA, I have a hard time saying no. I got asked to do a music festival, supply a little bit of sound, and then the next thing you know, uh, PJ Olson, who's uh, uh, an international singer who's actually from this area, uh, decides that he doesn't want to bring a band and he's gonna do a band of just kids. Just kids, 17 of them in one big band. We're talking five guitar players in one band. It's crazy, it's ridiculous. But that got something started. We did something, we had fun, we impacted these kids. We made an emotional difference in their lives. We showed them that you can aim really high and achieve it. We allowed them to have an experience that some people never get. And we let them do it between the ages of 11 and 18. And that was this, that was this program down here. Okay, I have learned something along the way. And it's important that you understand something. I don't know what I'm talking about. Really, I don't know what I'm talking about. I am still the guy that would prefer to be home right now playing with my cubes and trying to knock over you know, virtual walls. That being said, I still have 10 thoughts. And what I did is I just put these up and I just wanna go through them and say, these are some of the things I've along, learned along the way. Number one, be passionate and dream big. If you are gonna do something, really do it. I once told one of our interns up at Calumet Electronics, where I work for a living, that the world is full of mediocrity. Don't be mediocre. 
Don't sit down and set out to do something. In, in small things or big things, don't set out to do something that is small. Set out to do something that is good. Really put your work into it. Everything that this PowerPoint is not. Get, right? This is not a great example. Um, <laughs> Because you need to dream big, and you need to do things. When, when you go to work, you're working for somebody. When you get involved in a lot of different things, you're working for somebody or you're realizing other people's dreams. One of the things you want to do is figure out what you are into, what you're passionate into, and try to inspire other people to do similar things. How do you get started? How do you take the littlest idea that you have or you have and say, well, can I turn this into something that's cool? Well, one of the first things that I learned is you have to identify your stakeholders. I know we've just gotten kind of technical, right? But you have to identify your stakeholders because they're surprising. For our dog sled race, there's the obvious ones. There's the mushers, there's the sponsors, there's the volunteers. Well, what about the business, businesses whose road we block when we put a snow road in? What about the radio operators who, if we don't stick to our volunteer schedule, are 75 years old and got to go to bed at 10 o'clock, you know, when our race is running till midnight and then got to get up the next day? There are so many stakeholders in an event that you never think about how many people you impact. You have to think about all of them because you change everybody's life in some way when you do something cool in the community, big or small, you make an impact. Whoops, we're going backwards. Build in real value. If you're going to ask for something from somebody, you have to give back. If we're going to ask for your money and you're going to give us $300 to do a sponsorship of some kind, we have to turn around and we have to reciprocate that. We have to give that back somehow. And that's a very important thing to realize. This is an interesting one. Lead by outperforming. And you'll see that my thought on this changes throughout this presentation. How do you lead a group? You get a group of people together and you want to do something big and suddenly, what you find is because you have a group of people, ideas start going in all kinds of directions. And that's great. You want to support that. But what if this is something you're passionate about, and you put a lot of time in, and you have a vision of what you want to be, and you consider yourself a leader? One of the simplest ways to stay ahead of a group is outperform them. What does that mean? You do more work than any of them. You develop your ideas faster than them. While they're talking about it, while they're thinking about it, you are putting stuff on the ground, you are putting stuff on the website, you are making contacts and connections. What does that ultimately mean? You're doing more work than everybody else. Is that really sustainable? Not at all. But it's a great way to get started. Which leads me to this conclusion, <laughs> personal experience. If everybody likes you, then you're probably not a leader. Because when you have so many people involved in projects and you have so much diversity and people want to go in different directions, people are not always going to like you. But leadership is not a popularity contest. Leadership is trying to take an idea and drive it in a direction for better or for worse. Hmm. That part about mediocrity. It's really, really, really easy to do something that is not exceptional. It's really, really easy to do something that is the minimum, that takes absolutely the minimum amount of contribution from each person around the table. That is very, very easy. But what you really want to do when you design an event is you want to have something that has an emotional component. You want people to have an emotional experience. I want people to be scared to miss the events I plan. Not just hope they show up, but be scared to actually miss them. Because you want them to come there and have an experience. But that is a very detailed thing. The devil is in the details. Everything from the dog race, it's everything from parking to, you know, where can you get to the food? Is there music? Is there sound? Can you figure out where the bathrooms are? You want it to be high energy. We want our, our start of our race to be like ESPN. There's music and there's announcing. And you want that kind of energy. Uh, it's a little bit easier with the rock camp. What are one of the ways we create a full experience? When the grandmas walk in the door, we're handing out earplugs. Here you go, grandma. Here you go. Yep. This is a kid's show at 120 decibels. It's going to be loud. 
right? We want to create a full experience. We want the lights. We want the smoke. We want the volume. Because if you get up there and these kids are rocking up, it's this tiny little sound. That's not enveloping. You want to be enveloped. You want what's going on on that stage to be undeniable. You want to look out at the audience and people to have their mouths open, having a great time. It's not that easy to do. But it's not impossible to do. You simply have to be passionate. You simply have to exceed what you think you're capable of. With these kids, when they come in, we, they're just kids. They've never played with another musician. The experience we put them through is profound and life-changing. That is possible with any kind of event, any kind of passion. Unfortunately, and fortunately, you really have to listen to people. You have to be genuine, and you really have to hear what they say. You really have to listen, because sometimes there's really beautiful ideas in there. Sometimes there's ideas that you fundamentally disagree with. But what does it do when you hear those ideas? What happens when you hear an idea that you disagree with? You know you disagree with it, right? And it makes your position and your own thoughts and your own thinking more solid. Sometimes you have to hear the wrong thing or see something done the wrong way in order to fully appreciate your own point of view. You have to be genuine and transparent. All of this leadership stuff only works if you're sincere and you're genuine and you're open and you're honest. Transparency is huge. Tra Ever heard the saying, the truth will set you free? I finally get it. The truth will set you free is like a warm blanket you can wrap yourself in to protect yourself against the cold. Because what do people use against you? People use your own faults against you. People use the things that you screw up and try to hide against you. But if you are making an honest effort, if you are making a true effort, then what is somebody going to come and say to you? Todd, I don't care what you say, you're fat. And I'll say, well, fat? That's nothing. Have you seen my eyebrows, the hair? Have you seen the, ear, the hair I grow on my ears? You know. It's, it's, it's disarming. If somebody comes in and says, you know, I can't believe that you did this in this race of yours. I can't believe you have this problem and that problem and that problem. And we'll say, we know. We know. It's worse than that. <laughs> it's worse. <laughs> we also have this problem and this problem. And they're like, oh, oh, you're just, oh, okay. Well, oh, thanks for listening. Right? But, but that only works. That only works if you're putting in an honest effort. It only works if you're being true and genuine. Do the right thing, not the easy thing. Committees kill good ideas sometimes. Sometimes committee kills good ideas. And why is that? Because everybody is sitting around the table and everybody is listening to the work that needs to be done to make a great event and they're thinking one of two things. Awesome, let's do it. Or how much is this going to impact my life? What's the minimum I have to do at this table to make this happen? Which direction is going to make a great event? Which direction is going to make something world class instead of mediocre? Making a decision based on what kind of uh, schedule you have today or making a decision based on how committed you are to the project? Control is good. What I have learned is that I am controlling. And that is because I have a vision and I am trying to meet that vision. I'm trying to develop other people to meet that too. What I have also learned is that people around you are smarter than you. They're more talented than you. They're more dedicated than you. They will do it better than you, so you have to let them go. It takes a little while sometimes before somebody will buy into what you're doing or buy into the project. Now, of course, I'm making the assumption here with something like the Rock Camp that it's something that I'm leading and it's my idea. And for a while, I know more about it than other people. But eventually, other people on your team, they know more than you. And that's when you have to get away from those people, and you have to just let them do their own thing. It's kind of funny, but I learned, after the third year of the Copper Dog 150, I learned from our chairman and our volunteer coordinator that they had a campaign that I didn't know about. And that campaign was to get me to stop saying this, this race, planning this race, is a life wrecker. 
Really, they said that. Because I was saying that, because I was investing so much in this race, so much in the time to do it, that it was systematically destroying my life. That was a little bit too much. But what was funny is that they really were trying to just get me to stop saying something like that. But all the work that goes into a big project, it doesn't always seem worth it. I mean, I'm sure planning this TEDx event has been a very grueling experience for the people who put it on. But it's beautiful because we don't notice any of that hardship. That's the sign of a good event. But the payoff is completely worth it. You go into your event and you're so cooked and you're so fried and it's over and you're like, when do we get started for next year? It's, it's, a, it's a time of renewal. The Cobra Dog 150 started out in 2010. It was the first race. And we set all this up. You know, we take all the snow out of Calumet all winter, and then, or all winter, and then we go and we put it back in again. We lay a snow road, and we didn't know if anybody was going to show. So then there was 300 people, then we looked and there was 500, and then there was 1,000, and then there was 2,000, and then there was 3,000 people our first year. And we were like, wow, maybe we have something here. And this is a little bit what, what our, our event looks like. Uh, this is actually from 2013. And you can see the people we're estimating we probably had somewhere between six and 8,000 people. It's very hard to tell. But this was an idea. This was just an idea five years ago. Right now, it is on the map on a national and international scale. And that's pretty amazing to me. And that's coming from a small group of people who are simply being passionate. The Rock Camp, we're going to be going into our fourth year and we are going to once again hopefully take 30 to 40 young people and put them through an amazing, amazing experience. My point in talking about all of this is right where I started, which is I'm not anybody special. I'm just a, a guy with a computer, and, you know, and I work and I have a job. Uh, I don't really deserve to be on this stage for anything. But what I have learned is that if you invest your time in something, you have something you're passionate about, get a couple people involved, and you can turn it into a whole thing, and it is totally, totally worth it. Anyone can do it. Thank you.